And with that, we're proud to announce the core cast of our upcoming Super Smash Bros. feature film. Oh, buddy. I can't wait to see who they cast as Mario. Chris Pratt will be playing Mario, and his voice will be unlike anything you expect. Okay, that's unexpected, but uh, sure, we'll go with it. Next, to our lovable yellow Pokemon, Pikachu. Oh, please tell me they're bringing Ryan Reynolds back. It's the unofficial sequel to Detective Pikachu. Chris Pratt. We wanted a voice that truly matched what audiences expect from this adorable electric mouse. What? Joining the project as the voice of the intergalactic bounty hunter Samus Aran will be Zendaya? Chris Pratt. Isn't Chris San just the perfect choice? He's so cool. Oh, come on! And our final announcement for the day will be for the voice of Kirby. As one of our most beloved characters, we wanted a voice that lived up to all of your expectations. So, voicing Kirby will be Uh, let me guess. Chris Pratt? Idris Elba. After his brilliant portrayal as Knuckles, we couldn't imagine anyone else in the role. You know what? I'm okay with that. Hello, Internet! Welcome to Film Theory, the show that reminds you that if you stomp the subscribe button long enough, you'll eventually get a one-up. And no, I haven't made a mistake here. This is not the gaming channel, believe it or not. I know, multimedia synergy can get confusing. Welcome, my friends, to Mario Week here at Theorist HQ. We're going live right now. We have a companion video over on our sister location, Game Theory, talking about the brand new Nintendo Pictures Movie Studio. Yeah, in case you missed that news, Nintendo bought itself a movie company. So step aside, MCU, it's time for the rise of the NCU. Out with Doctor Strange, in with Doctor Mario. Anyway, I think they're gonna be doing some wild stuff with that one, so go check out that video by clicking the links that you see on screen after you finish watching this one. Meanwhile, over here on Film Theory, we're talking about another Nintendo movie project, the upcoming Mario movie. You remember several months ago when Shigeru Miyamoto crashed a Nintendo Direct to announce the cast of an upcoming Super Mario film made by Illumination Entertainment? creator of the minions? Well, if you don't remember that, maybe you do remember the giant chorus of confusion that came as they announced Chris Pratt as the lovable plumber. What? Mario Pratt. No! <laughs> Is Mario... <laughs> 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 yep, instead of casting Mario's iconic longtime voice actor Charles Martinet for the part, Universal gave the role to Chris Pratt, along with a number of other celebrities like Jack Black as Bowser and Seth Rogen as Donkey Kong. The news was so ridiculous that it spawned a meme announcing that Chris Pratt would now be voicing anyone and everyone in all movies moving forward, which, lo and behold, suddenly manifested Pratt into also voicing everyone's favorite Monday-hating cat Garfield in another upcoming animated release. Yep, that is apparently gonna be a thing, and we only have ourselves to blame. Now listen, Hollywood stunt casting in animated movies has been a thing for basically as long as animated movies have been around. And whether or not this tactic actually works to get more butts into theaters is a theory for another day. Now, what I'm more interested in today is how silent the project has been ever since that Chris Pratt announcement. I mean, just last week as I write this, there was another Nintendo Direct with Miyamoto swooping in, getting us all hyped for Mario footage, and then Pikmin 4. As far as Mario knew, all we got was this. The Super Mario Brothers animated movie we're developing with Chris Melodandri from Illumination will release next spring. A delayed next spring. That's it. Miyamoto dipped and we're all still left completely in the dark about this thing. Well, that was at least until right after the Nintendo Direct when they announced that they were going to be showcasing the first teaser trailer for the film at New York Comic Con. That's about a week from today. But uh, after being starved for Mario news for months, I didn't want to wait. So I'm here to provide, maybe not news, but gross speculation mildly supported by evidence, logic, and critical thinking. So pretty much better than what passes as news here in 2022. I want to take another look back at the casting of the Super Mario movie because I suspect the choices the filmmakers have made tell us a lot about their intentions with this film and the type of story they're planning to tell. In fact, I think we can predict almost every major beat of the plot for the entire movie just based on the casting alone. And spoiler alert, friends, if I'm right, you might just be looking at the video game industry's version of Encanto right here. Get those TikToks at the ready. So before we get into the details, we first need to determine what sort of Mario story the filmmakers are aiming to tell. See, Mario games tend to fit into one of two different silos. There's the more straightforward, serious narratives where there's a consistent internal logic and a passable story. Think of games like Super Mario 64, Sunshine, Galaxy, or Odyssey. Princess gets abducted by Space Bowser. We gotta save her. Bowser wants a wedding. We gotta crash it. Princess make cake. Mario want cake. It's basic stuff, but there is a plot there. On the other hand, you have some of the more meta game, 
games. Stuff like Mario Kart, Party, Sports. You know, the games where Mario plays golf on the weekends with the dragon turtle who kidnaps his girlfriend. Now, the reflex here might be to say that the filmmakers are gonna lean towards a less serious, more meta story because they've cast Chris Pratt as the lead role. After all, he played a similar lead character in the very meta Lego movie. But I don't think that this is gonna be the case for the Mario movie, not because of who's here, but rather because of who isn't here. As of yet, there have been zero signs of the metagame mainstay characters like Daisy, Wario, Bowser Jr., Toadette, or internet boyfriend Waluigi, who alone would earn the studio a ton of free press on Twitter because he's the head of the Nintendo meme machine. No, the main cast of characters that Miyamoto announced have all been fixtures of early core Mario stories. Toad, Princess Peach, Bowser, Luigi, even OG arcade characters like Cranky Kong and Donkey Kong. But what really clinches the origin story angle for me is this announcement right here, casting someone for the role of Spike. Now, Spike has been the name of a couple of Mario characters throughout the years, the most popular being a recurring enemy that pukes spiked balls out of his mouth, but the Spike they're referring to here is actually very different. Notice the little logo next to the casting announcement, a bearded man in a hard hat. This is actually a reference to a character named Foreman Spike. If you've never heard of him, I don't blame you. He's so obscure and so old that I've barely played his game. You see, Foreman Spike comes from an obscure 80s NES release called Wrecking Crew. If you're familiar familiar with it at all, it's probably thanks to the Wrecking Crew stage in Super Smash Bros. In the game, you have to knock down walls, columns, and buildings, all while being chased around by masked eggplants. I mean, what do you expect? It was the early days of arcades. Makes about as much sense as Yellow Circle Man avoids ghosts while consuming fruit. Anyway, the game is considered part of Mario's origin story, considering that you play as Mario, construction dude. So, Form and Spike probably wouldn't show up in this movie unless it was trying to be something similar, which means I'm leaning towards this Mario movie being a a genuine attempt to tell a Mario origin story. Now, don't worry, I don't think this is gonna be a gritty, realistic Zack Snyder's Mario or anything like that, but come to think of it... <laughs> Okay, so knowing that this is gonna be a Mario origin story, it lets us figure out that the movie is almost certainly gonna start in either New York City or the video game equivalent, New Donk City, depending on how in-universe they wanna go with it. Again, we can thank Foreman Spike's casting for that information. Foreman Spike was one of the antagonists of Wrecking Crew, where he was Mario and Luigi's jerk boss as they worked construction jobs around the city. That makes me believe that they're embracing a lot of the early, more grounded lore of the franchise. Well, as grounded as he can be with giant apes roaming around New York. Either way, this suggests that Mario and Luigi are gonna be from Brooklyn or the New Donk City equivalent, complete with gruffer New York accents rather than the whimsical Italian stereotype that Charles Martinet created for games set in the Mushroom Kingdom. The fact that they're working for Form and Spike is also why I'm sure that Mario and Luigi won't begin the movie as plumbers. Now, before you freak out, I am very well aware that all of this sounds a lot like the awful live-action Super Mario Brothers movie from 1993. Stupid. Goomba! What? Oh! Be proud! Go Goomba! Here's the thing though, all of this is actually in line with early Mario franchise lore. Yeah, back when Mario was still named Jumpman, he was a carpenter because that made more sense with the setting of those games. Construction sites in cities. They didn't permanently switch him to plumber until Mario Brothers in 1983, when the setting of the game suddenly shifted down into the sewers of New York. And from there, the role of plumber just kinda stuck because Nintendo decided they liked the pipe aesthetic for the first Super Mario Brothers platformer. But the whole New York blue collar worker thing? Yeah, it's been a Mario series mainstay since the very beginning. It's just evolved and refocused itself a few times over the years. So, like I said at the top of the episode, it's amazing what details we can glean for the story just from the cast list, and we're just getting started. See, I'm confident that the very first conflict of the movie, probably the opening scene of the movie, is gonna be an adaptation of the original Donkey Kong arcade game. This is because Fred Armisen has been cast as Cranky Kong, while Seth Rogen is playing a separate Donkey Kong. Why would that matter? Well, the old curmudgeonly Cranky Kong that we know from the Donkey Kong Country games is canonically the same great ape from the original arcade game, the one that kidnapped Pauline before throwing barrels at Mario Jumpman Mario. Donkey Kong is Cranky Kong's son, so given that Cranky and Donkey are listed as two separate characters, and the fact that the movie seems to be drawing from old Mario lore, it's likely that we're gonna see those events from the original arcade game play out in the film. And, because it all happens at a construction site, wouldn't be surprised if it ends up being the same one that Mario and Luigi work at under Foreman Spike. Cranky 
Lee's inclusion also means that we're gonna see a time skip, probably after that opening scene. See, gorillas live somewhere between 35 and 40 years on average, so for Cranky to have kidnapped Pauline and fought Mario in his prime, but then to be an old man monkey in the present day, it's reasonable to assume that something like 10 years have passed. Also, just because I feel like this is the best place to call it out, I don't expect Mario or Luigi to be wearing their iconic outfits at this stage in the movie. They might still have overalls, but I bet they'll be in reversed or different colors, reflecting the original sprites and concept art for the characters having wildly different color palettes. The modern iconic look for the Mario Brothers wasn't solidified until the Super Mario platformers, so I'd expect them gearing up into those for a big final moment later on in the movie. So there you have it, simple as that, act one of the film. Cranky Kong kidnaps someone at a construction site, and a young 15 to 20 year old Mario saves them. If they're keeping in line with Mario canon, the person kidnapped will be Mario's first girlfriend Pauline. As of yet, no one's been publicly announced to play the character, but that sort of thing's common for minor roles in animated films like this. They'd announce more minor cast members closer to release to keep the movie in the headlines, so I wouldn't be surprised if they have that announcement roll out later. That is, unless they're planning on mixing it up and Peach and Pauline actually wind up being fused into the same character, which, fun fact, has been a pet theory of mine for years that I've never found the evidence to do. See, even I have some evidentiary standards. I mean, not much, but it's good to know that they're there somewhere. Anyway, after that opening rescue, I suspect that we're gonna see some sort of a time skip, probably about 10 years or so to account for Cranky Kong's age. Again, if we're following Mario lore, Pauline will either be mayor of New York or New Donk or be campaigning for it after the time skip, just like the role that she plays in Super Mario Odyssey. At this point, traditional storytelling technique demands that Mario want something during this phase in the movie. Maybe he's dissatisfied with his construction job or with his life in general after seeing people he knows like Pauline moving on to bigger and better things. Maybe he's upset with his antagonistic boss Spike or he dreams of starting his own business. Regardless of what it is, Mario is dissatisfied with where he is in his life and this want is gonna be the thing that gets the adventure started. Given that the plumbing aesthetic of the Mario franchise started specifically in the sewers of New York, something is gonna draw Mario and Luigi down there. I believe this is where Seth Rogen's Donkey Kong is gonna enter the picture, setting a trap for the Mario Brothers. I say this because Rogen is billed as one of the top six actors for the film, and given that we've already established DK exists in the New York section of the world rather than the Mushroom Kingdom section, we gotta find a way to get him into the rest of the story somehow. Here, Mario and Luigi will fight Donkey Kong at the end of Act 1, probably with a bunch of turtles and crabs crawling out of pipes like we see in the Mario Brothers game. Finally, like any good anime, the trip will somehow be isekai into the Mushroom Kingdom through a magic pipe, so we can finally hop on over to the Mushroom Kingdom and meet the rest of the cast starting in Act 2. Here in Act 2, I expect the movie is gonna draw a lot from the early Mario franchise games. Specifically, it's gonna be more or less an adaptation of the original Super Mario Brothers for the NES. You know, the classic stuff. Bowser invading the Mushroom Kingdom, kidnapping Princess Peach after Mario and Luigi arrive, sending the brothers on their journey to stop King Koopa. This will set up two important points for our narrative here. First, seeing Peach get kidnapped like Pauline is gonna remind Mario of the heroic man that he used to be in his younger years, encouraging him to try and recapture some of his earlier spark. It's also here that we're gonna see Donkey Kong switch his loyalties, going from an antagonist to more of a comedic support for Mario and Luigi. I say this primarily because of Seth Rogen's casting. In these sorts of family-friendly animated films, Rogen tends to be the comedic ally for the main good guy. Think of his parts as Pumbaa in The Lion King or Bob in Monsters vs. Aliens. Combine that with reports of a Donkey Kong spin-off in development, that means that DK is gonna need a steal a fair bit of screen time to set that film up. Now, this is a pretty wild shot in the dark, but if I had to guess, I'd say that seeing how the kidnapping of Princess Peach devastates the Kingdom of Toads will make Donkey Kong realize that Cranky was wrong all those years ago about kidnapping people. Or heck, maybe Bowser just stole a big old horde of DK's bananas and that just made him hangry. Either way, DK is probably gonna join the good guy side here. Also, Princess Peach will not be the helpless damsel in distress that she is in the classic Mario platformers, mostly because that would be tone deaf. This is 2022 after after all, that sort of stuff doesn't fly anymore. Plus, Anya Taylor-Joy is a girl boss. She has a ton of serious projects playing powerful women under her belt. I doubt she'd want her only lines here to be, Help me, Mario! And here's your cake, Mario! So I expect Peach to take an active role in her own rescue. From here, expect the story to play out like a classic Super Mario game. Mario, Luigi, and Donkey Kong adventure through the Mushroom Kingdom's various biomes, going from castle to castle looking for Peach. I wouldn't be surprised to see a funny montage of Mario freeing a castle only for Toad to say the princess is in another castle. Meanwhile, over in his fortress, Bowser and Peach will share a lot of scenes together where she's trying to escape as he attempts to woo her like it's a romantic comedy. Before the final battle, Mario and Luigi get their iconic overalls just so we can make sure that there are some money shots for the trailer, and also a bunch of new merch for Nintendo Land and Universal Studios. True to the first game, Bowser will probably meet his end on a bridge, likely falling
falling into lava. But don't worry, this won't be the last that we see of King Koopa. The post credits will reveal him nursing his wounds, the camera will pan out for the big teaser reveal of the Koopalings. I mean, it could be Bowser Jr., but let's face it, the Koopalings are way more synonymous with early Mario games and would get way more hype in the press. And that's it, Mario's arc will be resolved. His dissatisfaction with life will disappear as he finds new purpose in the Mushroom Kingdom. Cue a final Easter egg joke of Donkey Kong, Mario, and Luigi hopping into go-karts and racing off into the sunset as the screen fades to black. So, that's how I see the story of this Super Mario movie playing out, but don't click away to my other Mario theory on game theory just yet, my friends. We're not done here. See, loyal theorists, there's a last cherry on top of this plot prediction that I think is gonna convince you that I'm omniscient if I get right. My wild swing for the fences theory here is that this Super Mario movie is gonna be a musical. Why do I say that? First of all, Illumination Entertainment has itself a history of making movies where gorillas break out into song. In fact, a shocking number of their films are musicals, including ones that are even based on non-musical source material. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that this movie is gonna be a musical, but I also ask you to once again look at the cast list. Literally all of them have histories with music in some way or another. Let's just do a quick roll call here. Chris Pratt has a surprisingly decent singing voice, and he's already starred in animated movie musicals like the aforementioned Lego movie. Likewise, Charlie Day basically takes every opportunity he has to add singing into It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Keegan-Michael Key's biggest secret weapon might be his singing voice. I look for love. All the same old places. Even actors with smaller announced roles here, like Kevin Michael Richardson and Fred Armisen, have pipes. The weakest singing voice of everyone who's been cast so far would be Seth Rogen, and even he's still sung in movies like the Lion King remake. But the biggest casting coup for Illumination here has to be Anya Taylor Joy and Jack Black. Because they're Bowser and Peach, they are guaranteed to share a lot of scenes, and therefore at least one musical number. Anya Taylor Joy has a history as a studio recording artist and has an amazing voice. Jack Black, on the other hand, is a master comedic musician in his own right, being half of the metal band Tenacious D and being well-known for his roles in films like The Pick of Destiny and School of Rock. This pair sharing a musical number together is almost too good to pass up. Just imagine Bowser whipping out a guitar and trying to woo Princess Peach through song and dance. It writes itself. And think, people were surprised by the Chris Pratt announcement. Wait till they hear Mario burst out into song in the first trailer. So, there you have it, my friends. Feel free to sit the next Nintendo Direct out, Miyamoto on, I've got you covered. The Mario movie is gonna be an origin story starting with construction sites and Kongs and ending with Bowser and ballads. And hey, since I saved you the time, please go back to working on Mario Odyssey 2. It's been too long without a main series Mario title. But hey, that's just a theory. A film theory. And now's your chance, dear viewer, to go check out our other new video on game theory. Talking about the brand spanking new Nintendo Pictures movie studio. Trust me, I think Nintendo is getting up to some weird weird shenanigans that no other movie studio could get away with. But to find out exactly what I mean, you have to click on over to that video right now. Right now. Link is on screen. Not gonna say it again. You're smart. Go watch it.